Hey guys, my name is David Parker and today we're going to talk about our vac truck. Our company is really in the fiber optic business and in the fiber optic construction business in the last four or five years, one of the things that is a real necessity to have is a vac truck or a hydro excavation truck. Today we're going to talk a little bit about our truck. There's several different varieties of this truck. You can have a truck that is an industrial air mover. Then you have trucks that are just solely hydro trucks. And then you have trucks that are sewer trucks. And then you have trucks that are designed to clean out pipes and those kind of things. Our truck is kind of like the best of all those. We couldn't afford to have a bunch of different trucks. We actually purchased one truck that's a real specialty truck that does all of those things really well. We have one of the largest air movers on this truck, about 5,000 CFM, it's a little bit over that. It will do 28 inches of mercury. 30 inches of mercury is about 15 pounds, which is sea level. So this truck will suck nearly a near vacuum while still moving 5,000 cubic feet of air. So we actually use this truck, they'll suck the lids off of our boxes and set them aside. If we cut out a piece of square concrete or asphalt, we can just suck it out of the hole. Being an industrial air mover, as well as a vacuum truck, as well as a hydro excavating truck. This thing has a couple of things that are kind of unique to it. This first box kind of has a little swirl in it and it sucks and separates the mud and the debris that's coming out of the box. And then that swirls over to the other side and it has a bunch of tubes where it's a, like a filter housing. And by having both an industrial air moving truck and a truck that has a high pressure water lance on it, you know, we can do a lot of things. And so then after it, it gets all cleaned up, it, it sucks through here, this swirls it, and then this is the last route that it gets before it goes into the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump is a vein pump. And what's interesting about that is if you guys, you've seen our video on the trucks where people add PTOs. Well, this truck has a PTO, and all the PTO does is runs this big hydraulic system because the boom lifts up and, and it dumps this thing like a dump truck and it has all those hydraulic functions. But this industrial air mover, the vein pump requires so much horsepower that what you do is you actually push the clutch in, you flip a switch on the dash, and then you put the truck in the equivalent, it's a 10 speed truck or a 13 speed truck, and you put it in the equivalent of the eighth gear. The drive line off the engine then drives this pump because it takes nearly 300 horsepower to run the pump if you're doing 5,000 cubic feet a minute. The 28 inches of mercury or minus 14 PSI. I know that's not technically correct, but that's a, a good way to think about it. The factory gross on it is 79,800 pounds. So this truck is nearly 80,000 pounds what the factory's designed it for. To put that in perspective, when you see a semi going down the road, they're rated for 80,000 pounds. It kind of gives you an idea. This is a super heavy truck with the water. So you change the water weight back into the, the back and it holds 16 yards, which is similar to what a big dump truck holds. There's a lot of other neat features on it too. I mean, we just can't go over everything, but if you were stuck in water, this is a hydraulic pump and we can take a lay flat hose and at the same time we're sucking, we can pump the water off so we don't have to stop. Typically, we don't use it in that fashion. We just suck all the dirt and material water into the tank. It goes in as a slurry and then we bring it back out to our pad and we dump it. The hydraulic excavation part is where we're, we're using a pressure washer pump that can make a ton of pressure. And it, we went ahead and got the big pump that does 20 or 30 gallons a minute. So you guys have seen the pressure washer on your little pressure washer at your house. And you know, the whole pump is probably about that big. That's the pressure washer pump. So it's got this huge hydraulic motor and then this great big pressure washing pump. So two guys could be running it. We typically don't work it that way. With this box, with the heater, we can make hot water and sometimes clays and other kinds of things that you're cutting respond better. It's a real specialized truck. And in our world, we can go after utilities and daylight them and look at them. And you don't have to have a dig ticket with this because it's a non-invasive way that once you pressure wash to a pipe or to a power line or anything like that, a fiber optic cable, you don't hurt it. So you can basically just wash the water away from it instead of digging through it and tearing it up. One thing to make a vac truck really successful is the infrastructure that it takes to do it. We have a two inch water source so that we can fill up that 1300 gallon water tank on the truck. And this helps us with all the other things. So we have a water system here where we can fill the tank up really quickly because if you did it with a hose pipe, 
you know, about six, eight gallons a minute. It doesn't take much math to divide that out and know that'd be a real problem. The operator of the truck, he's really good at keeping it clean and maintained. If you go to a landfill or to a yard to dump, with the mud, it rolls back on the truck. So we created this pad where we could do it. And we're fortunate that we have a guy that's in the dirt moving business. So we were already adjacent to somebody that does that. It's amazing uh, how much field dirt we can bring back in because it's pretty clean. And uh, he's also really impressed with how it packs. So when that mud goes through the slurry of the truck, it, it kind of works out that all the solids and the rocks and the little bee rocks, they get mixed into that slurry. And then when we dump it, it dewaters and runs off through the grass and cleans up. And then he'll put the dirt in a pile. And then when he goes in to install it, the dirt installs really well and it packs back nice. I think it's because it's been kind of taken apart and it kind of acts like GAB, graded aggregate base, which you know, that's the kind of rock that has big rocks, little rocks, fines, and different sizes, so you get high compaction. Having the truck is not the only expense you have. Then you have to have kind of this infrastructure pad to be able to service the truck once you bring it back so you can get it cleaned up, get the mud dumped, and then go back. And one of the things that, because we tend to work all the time, is we've added in some lights. So we have some lights that we can turn on, some 1,000 watt equivalent, and some 400 watt equivalent in LED. And it just makes it nice with the pad. So a lot of times in the wintertime we come back in and it's dark and it just is nice to be in a lit environment to work and service the truck. One point that we should make about our truck, a lot of people call them sewer trucks and that's true and those trucks are specially designed just to suck up sewer and then take to a reclaim station. We don't ever put any sewer in our truck at all. All we ever put in our truck is mud. Well guys, we appreciate you watching this video. We hope you liked it. If there's any questions or comments that I didn't address in the video, throw them down in the bottom. Subscribe and we appreciate you following along.